the president's unilateral action will get people killed, how hot will it get, and how destabilizing will it be? They're not interested in history. They don't, they don't know it's going to stop any hope of Middle East uh, progress in the peace talk. As Mr. Trump has been warned by numerous Arab and Muslim leaders that he is, quote, playing with fire, that this is reckless, that this crosses a red line, that this is something he should back away from. What the outcome of this could be, the consequences of this are potentially explosive. Yeah, let me... You'd have an explosion, an absolute explosion in the region. What he has done is thrown a diplomatic bomb into the Middle East peace process. And, uh, as you mentioned, previous presidents have made this campaign commitment but stepped back from doing it because they thought it would interfere with the peace process. And now Donald Trump appears to be on the verge of fulfilling that campaign promise, but at great peril to the Mideast peace process, which he has held up as a main priority of his uh, foreign policy. Well, already world leaders have warned Donald Trump, not just the Mideast regional powers, but our own allies in Europe warning against the dangers of making such a commitment at this time, that it serves no purpose, that it will not promote peace and will complicate those matters. So it looks like the U.S. is going to be on its own on this one. It would lead to a new, uh, a new break of violence mm -hmm. in the area, to severe condemnations from other Arab countries, mm -hmm. to many, many negative uh, 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 developments. So I think he will not do that. If so, it's a new game. Wow. Our actions are intended to help advance the cause of peace. We must recognize that peace is advanced, not set back, when all parties are honest with each other. Our actions reflected an honest assessment of reality. Welcome back to AM Joy. At an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council on Friday, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley defended Donald Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Trump announced Wednesday his controversial plan to relocate the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, upending decades of U.S. foreign policy and drawing criticism from parts of the world that are not usually in much agreement, including the Vatican, the Kremlin, Turkey, Jordan, and more, who believe the move will lead to massive unrest in the region. What do you think this then does to whatever we now call the peace process? There's no more peace process. The peace process has been dead for a while. Negotiation has not uh, produced any effect on the ground. And basically, this is the bullet in the heart of the peace process. Nearly every former U.S. ambassador to Israel disagrees with what was just done, calling the, pro calling the plan wrong-headed, dangerous, or deeply flawed. Um, do you agree with those former ambassadors and with what you just heard from Rula Jabril? Well, I, I was one of those former ambassadors. Um, uh, this is a serious mistake. Um, the Trump administration now has a high bar to overcome if they're arguing that this step was taken in pursuit of advancing the peace process or advancing stability in the region. Uh, they certainly have yet to demonstrate or to make a convincing argument that that's the case. Uh, for most people, I think the, it's clear that this makes the situation uh, in the region m much more complicated, much more difficult to, to work through. It's hard to see how this advances the, is Israel's security or, or the safety of the United States or the region, which is what we should be focused on. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this does not make it pro-Israel because the long-term implications of this are not necessarily good for Israel. They're certainly not good for the region, yeah. and it's not good for Israel to be surrounded in a region of instability. The best thing for Israel is if there's stability around the region as well as within Israel. This uh, does not lead to that goal. Uh, uh, this kind of uh, policy, unilateral decision, will basically wreck the Middle East. So essentially, when you look at this, it was nothing to do with the Middle East or peace or Palestinian rights or any of the difficulties that have presented themselves to responsible American political leaders and world leaders. This was all about what we're so familiar with, with Donald Trump and his nepotistic plan, throwing a little red meat to supporters, to big donors. The President Trump's big decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and one that Palestinians and others say could destroy hopes of Middle East peace once and for all. Uh, right now, as tensions rise around the Trump administration's recognition of uh, Jerusalem, this move threatens to destroy a balancing act in the old city around this site. Joining us now is Ambassador Dennis Ross, who has worked on the Middle East peace process for many years. He served as the Middle East envoy for President Clinton and was a senior national security appointee under President Reagan, H.W. Bush, and Obama. In short, he knows what he's talking about. Dennis, there's pretty much universal... Uh, I would say, okay, Saudi Arabia, 
Iran, across the board, we're hearing from a lot of different forces agreeing this wasn't a good move. How does the administration proceed from here? Well, they have to proceed delicately. So one of the things the administration now has to do is deal with the aftermath of this declaration. It has created an environment that makes it very difficult for the Palestinians and for the Arabs. If they were to present the plan in the next couple of weeks, they would get an absolute negative. Joining me for more on all this, David Makovsky. He was a senior policy advisor to Secretary of State John Kerry's peace team for Israeli-Palestinian negotiations during 2013 and 2014. And he is a long-serving fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. And Shibli Telhami, he is the Anwar Sadat Professor of Peace and Development at the University of Maryland. The most important issue is really the consequences. Uh, put aside the departure uh, in terms of why the administration is doing this. There's no one in the world who's arguing this would be helpful to American foreign policy. Bottom line, David McCoskey, does this help matters in the region or hurt? I think if he does not draw the key distinction, I agree with Shibley, it could be, it could be a death blow for his peace efforts. You know, there, I don't see an upside. That's why I'm led to the belief that maybe the administration has already given up on making peace and they think this will enable them to blame someone else. It also undermines the peace process launched by Jared Kushner as the status of Jerusalem is one of the most incendiary issues in the conflict. President Trump has boasted about his chance at peace, but four of the five world leaders he spoke with Tuesday said this would be a setback. Pal As for that peace plan, the Trump administration has yet to present any proposal, saying Jared Kushner's team is still figuring it out. President Trump announcing a new peace agreement between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. He is speaking. Playing out hours after history was made at the White House today. Israel, the UAE and Bahrain together at a signing ceremony celebrating the Abraham Accords, the deal normalizing relations between the country. On the White House South Lawn before a packed crowd, many not wearing a mask, history was indeed made today. We'll sign a treaty of peace, diplomatic relations, and full normalization. There are strong indications that other Arab nations could enter into a deal with Israel. President Trump saying maybe seven, eight, or nine more, including, David, Saudi Arabia. CNN's Oren Lieberman explains how significant the agreements are and how they are reshaping alliances right across the Middle East. It's been 26 years since the last peace agreement between Israel and an Arab nation, that being Israel and Jordan, and now two within a month. First Israel and the United Arab Emirates, and then Israel and Bahrain just recently. These are major foreign policy accomplishments for President Donald Trump and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. 